All right, so first up, if I have a, if I have a function and say it has some exponent, to, to differentiate it, what I do is I take that exponent and put it in front of the variable. This example has no coefficient. And then my new exponent is just one less. Okay, so let me give you an example to show you what that means. Uh, and the examples are going to be where I, I don't have a coefficient in front of the term. So first up, I'm given this polynomial. Polynomial is a, some, some expression that's got uh, some terms in it. And so let's say this was a curve, which would be pretty curvy, pretty up and down, because the highest power is 5. And I want the equation of the gradient function. That means differentiating it. And since I've got no coefficients here, that means no numbers in front of those letters, what I do is I take the exponent, and I put it in front of the x, and I take 1 off of that exponent, 5 minus 4. Uh, 5 minus 1 is 4. And then I go to the next term, and I do the same thing. Bring the exponent in front, which is quite easy because there's no coefficient in there blocking it or messing it up or anything. And 3 take away 1 is, is 2. Um, and what about this one? Well, here, I don't have an exponent there, but I do. It's a 1. And so when I bring that 1 in front, it becomes 1x. And 1 take away 1 is is zero. Okay. Well, what happens here? What happens here is anything to the zero power is what? One. So this turns to one, and this actually turns to one as a term. So I get 5x4 plus 3x squared plus 1 times 1, which just gives me one. Okay, let's try <clears throat> this example where I've got a negative exponent, but it's, it's the rule still applies. Okay, so I want to find the gradient function. Uh, same thing applies. I bring the, the negative 2 as the exponent. Put that in front of the x. And you still subtract 1 from that exponent, and negative 2 minus 1 is not negative 1. It's negative 3. Okay, so that kind of fools a lot of people because every time you still subtract 1 from the exponent, negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. Now this one over here, um, you know, you can that's called the constant term, no letters. But actually there is kind of an invisible x term there. It's, it's 3x to the 0 because x to the 0 equals 1. So when I differentiate a constant term, what do I get? I bring the 0 in front. 0 take away 1 is negative 1, and 0 times anything is just 0. So you don't have to work this bit out. You just need to remember, differentiating a constant term, otherwise known as a number, will always equal 0. So if there is a coefficient, meaning a number in front of the x, Nothing changes except we just multiply that exponent we brought down in front of it to the coefficient. Okay, so we still take the exponent, bring it down, multiply it to the coefficient, and go from there. Okay, so for example, so to differentiate this one, this is uh, dy by dx, which means how y changes in respect to x. Uh, that's just the, the gradient function notation we can write if y is the original function. So bring the exponent in front and multiply it. 3 times 2 is 6. And take 1 off of the exponent. 2 minus 1 is 1. So I don't really need to put that 1 as an exponent there because um, you don't need to. Uh, next term, what's the exponent here? There's a 1 there. 1 times 4 is 4. And when I subtract 1 from 1, I'm left with x to the 0, which equals 1. So that does not have a variable next to it anymore. So what that means is any time you differentiate a term that is just x, it's always going to be just that coefficient. So to differenti differentiate this one, 
we do the same thing we've done, take the exponent, put it in front, multiply it to the coefficient, negative 3 times negative 3 is 9, and take 1 off of the exponent. Negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4. Same thing here. Bring the exponent, multiply it in front to the coefficient, uh, negative 2 times 7 is uh, minus 14, and 1 less from negative 2, negative 2 minus 1 is, is negative 3. Okay, so that's, that's the gradient function, uh, that's uh, the d derivative function, uh, g dash x, whatever you want to call it, but there's lots of uh, names for that one polynomial. Now, now we'll try some, some harder examples. So let's take a look at this one. The only thing different here is that my coefficients are fractions. Same rules apply. Take the exponent, put it in front and multiply it. And I'll write this one out a little bit more. This is 2 times 3 quarter. And after I take 1 off that exponent, it becomes 1. And I'll work that out in a little bit. Here, my exponent is 1. 1 times a half is just a half. And differentiating a constant term turns to 0. So this, I don't, I don't do anything with that. It just turns to 0. Now we've got to do some fraction work. 2 times 3 quarters. Uh, that's 6 quarters x minus 1 half. If it's 0, I don't have to rewrite it. So I don't rewrite that zero again. The only thing I can do on that last step is simplify this fraction of six quarters, which gives me three halves. Now the only reason why that was harder, I guess, was was because of these fractions here. All right. Uh, next example, we want to find f dash x. We want to find the derivative function. Here's the original function. Now, if I have brackets, I don't, I don't want brackets in when I differentiate. I want it a nice, clean polynomial, ready to differentiate each term. Okay? So what do I do to, to eliminate brackets? Is I expand. Now, there's no calculus going on with expanding. That's not calculus. That's just algebra. So I don't write f dash x. I'm just rewriting the original function, knocking out the brackets. Uh, th so you have to know algebra. 3x times x cubed is, is 3x to the fourth, because I multiply that. And then I multiply 3x times 2x. And again, we've got to know algebra. 3x times 2x is 6x squared. Now that I have no brackets, now I can differentiate it. 12x cubed is when I differentiate this term. And this guy, easy one to differentiate. 2 times 6 is 12. Take 1 off the exponent. Leaves me with 1, so I don't have to write that 1 there. Okay? Okay, these last last two examples are, are a little bit different. Uh, this one, in that I've got two sets of brackets. This one, it's a fraction. And before I do the calculus, I want to make sure it's a nice polynomial with, with no fractions or brackets. So here... I just expand both both brackets first, and I get uh, x squared minus 8x plus 3x minus 24. And so my original function is x squared minus 5x minus 24. And remember the shortcut for doing that. I've got uh, 3 times negative 8 is negative 24 and 3 plus negative 8 is negative 5. Now I'm ready to do the calculus, differentiating each term. And the gradient function is quite, quite simple. Bring the 2 in front of the x, and take 1 off the exponent. That makes it 1. Uh, there's, there's a little 1 right there. Bring that in front, multiply it by the negative 5. That's negative 5. And this turns to 0. So that is my gradient function. That is the derivative function right there. Now this one, just before I differentiate it, I can, I can take this expression and break it up into two fractions, both over 4. Okay? So I can break this up into uh, 2x squared over 4 plus 
3x over 4. And that's what I want because I want kind of individual terms to differentiate. And I know this isn't simplified just yet, but I'm not going to worry about it just yet. So, I mean, 2 over 4 simplifies to a half. So now, once I broke those up like that, that works for any, any fraction I have. Now I'm ready to go. Bring the 2 in front of the coefficient, and that 2 gets multiplied to the 2 up there, and that's 4x over 4. Remember, 1 off that exponent is 1. Plus, now remember this, this is a 1. And when I put that in front of it, it's just left with 3 fourths. No x term, because when I take 1 off of the 1 exponent, it turns to 0. And so x to the 0 is 1. Finally, um, it looks like I can clean this up a little bit because the 4s do cancel out. And I get the gradient function of just x plus 3 quarters. So finally, there's heaps more examples of these. These are, these are just a couple, but um, the, the, the basic idea is the same for all of these polynomials that we're going to work with.